Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm going to tell you today about Dinesh D'Souza's book, The End of Racism. And before um, I go any further, there's some things that I wish he would have touched on, okay? He didn't touch on the lack of black characters in Disney movies, and Disney's a major conglomerate in America, and all kinds of Americans watch the Disney movies, okay? He didn't touch on the lack of black superheroes in Marvel for many years. Um, Marvel has really, over the last few years, worked to diversify their characters, but it hasn't been for a very long time, Okay? He didn't touch on that, and he also didn't touch on the modeling world, and anybody can see in the modeling world that it's a racist industry because the usually in the integrated magazines, and there's one black model, and it's usually the lightest skin um, black you can find, which I don't like. So I wish he would have touched on those. Okay, now let's go to what he would talked about in the book. And there's a lot of things in the book that I actually did like that he pointed out, okay? And this, I say read it for yourself, whether if you're conservative, liberal, black, white, see what you think about it, okay? First of all, he touched on the issue of slavery, and he touched on the issue of slavery that white people were not the only people involved in the slave trade, that Arabs were involved in the slave trade as well. And the people who had the most vicious things to say about Africans and African slaves were not the white people. It was um, actually a lot of the Arab Muslims um, and uh, Islamic scholar Ibn Khaldun, and he had said some pretty nasty, vicious things about the Africans. And he documents it in the book, so... Um, And he also noted, no, I, he also notes in the book that it is that blacks are not genetically inferior to anybody. That that's why you can see the book as an uplifting book because blacks are not genetically inferior. And he notes that in the book. He notes that the discrepancies between black and white test scores are not the cause of racism in his view, but they're not the cause of genetics either. And he talks about, and he notes this in the book too, a lot of blacks who benefit from affirmative action do not go on to pass university. Like it is around a 20% pass rate for ones who are not accepted by merit into the university systems. Now the ones who are accepted by merit um, is a completely different story, but the ones who are accepted on the grounds of racial preferences, there's a high dropout rate and there's a low pass rate. And I'm, I have differing views of affirmative action, some things I support with, some things I oppose with, but this is the, this is the part that he uses against affirmative action in the university system. And he paid, when he was um, president of King's College in New York City, he paid uh, an African-American student's tuition through four years. So D'Souza is not a racist. Plus, he's married to, his, he's married to a Hispanic woman. He's Indian-American married to a Hispanic woman. But... D'Souza said in the book that he said uh, some white people approached him and said a lot of what you make it, if you, what you say makes sense but I'm white I can't say this or I'll get hounded off the podium well that shouldn't that shouldn't happen you know if if you deny blacks at your restaurants or if you won't hire somebody because they're black or if you won't um or if you beat somebody up because they're black or you won't befriend them because they're black or you won't you know that's racism okay or you won't cheer for a sports team because they have lots of black athletes that's racism okay but this book, you shouldn't be able to not talk about it just because you're Caucasian, okay? One other thing he said that I liked is that Spike Lee told him or told some people in private that he did not agree with everything Louis Farrakhan says, but he says, I can't say that in public. And that's, the, that, that's a big problem with black culture, that people who don't agree with what some of their prominent leaders are saying, they feel like they can't speak out on what they agree with and what they disagree with without getting hounded by the group. That eliminates free thinking and that eliminates pulling yourself up by your bootstraps in those cultural circumstances. And also, yes, the, the federal government did provide blacks rights and they are for, responsible for the abolition of slavery um, the Black Voting Rights, the Black Civil Rights Act, the creation of the black middle class. That is true. The federal government opened um, the opportunity for blacks before the private sector did. But that was then, this is now. What And what D'Souza talked about in his interview when he discussed the book is that the federal government nowadays is not in a position to lift a lot of people out of poverty because um, there's higher deficits now. I mean, there, there just is. Um, he didn't point out the deficits. I'm pointing out the deficits. And the federal government right now is more of a liability than a helper because the federal government, because of a lot of deficits, they're not in a position to address, to correctly address these issues. 
Okay, and I don't blame I don't blame a lot of black people for looking to the government favorably instead of the liability because of what the federal government has done for them, and D'Souza doesn't either. So, anyways, I oh before I let you go, and the cab drivers that he interviewed, they were actually African American cab drivers, um, cab drivers from the Caribbean, cab drivers from Nigeria, and they had a lot of things to say about where they didn't pick up black customers because they were scared um one cab driver said i will pick up black customers but only if they're dressed well one said that he wouldn't and then another one said um he was skeptical about it and these were black cab drivers okay um so i don't think the cab driver thing is racist i think the cab driver is just trying to get home to his family and the cab driver would love to ask the educated black about his um educated and law-abiding black about his um family situation and where he doesn't have a criminal background, but a lot, but people in business are not in a position to know their customers personally a lot of times. Sometimes they are, but particularly with something like a cab driver, they're not. So, I say read it for yourself, see what you think, and go from there. Anyways, hope everybody's doing well. Take care. God bless everybody. Bye-bye.